Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore media and tech solutions for churches. In this video, I'm taking a look at the Cinetrek Cinelive C1 video switcher. More companies are reaching out to me wanting me to review their products, and I really don't have time and turn most of them down. So for me to make a video about something, it has to catch my attention in some way, whether that's a unique technology or something I think that will be helpful for people or a combination of features that intrigue me. And this little C1 video switcher has a few features that really do set it apart. That is the combination of a small portable four channel HDMI video switcher, which since the introduction of the A10 mini, we've seen a bunch of these come out on the market. But what this switcher adds is a built-in joystick for PTZ camera control. And all that in a small box that includes a five and a half inch screen. That makes this a really compact portable solution for someone using PTZ cameras. So let's take a look at this thing. Full disclosure, Cinetrek did send me this switcher for this review. I don't have to return it. They do not have any editorial control though. They'll be seeing this video at the same time as you. A quick tour around the outside. On the top, you've got four HDMI inputs. And man, I would really love to see a switcher like this with four SDI inputs, maybe a combination of both. But since this switcher seems purpose-built for PTZ cameras, and I'd say most of the PTZ cameras that are worth buying out there will have SDI outputs, I just think it's a miss not to have SDI connections. But with this switcher, you're gonna get four HDMI inputs. So if you need longer cable runs to your camera positions, I would run SDI from the camera and then convert it to HDMI at the switcher using a simple SDI to HDMI converter. Next, you've got two HDMI outputs, and these are both going to be program out. You don't seem to be able to change what these are outputting. It would be great if you could switch what is routed to at least one of these outputs, like a regular aux out, and especially to be able to output the multi-view. But I wasn't able to find a way to do that, so it's just two program outputs. The USB-C port can be used to output your program out as well to a computer. When you connect a USB cable to the computer, it shows up as a video input device, so you can bring your program video directly into something like OBS really easily. The LAN port is used to connect to your network. You can live stream through this connection, and you can connect to the C1 using a web interface from your phone or from a browser on your computer to control and configure the switcher. It's through this interface that you can configure things like your live stream destinations and keys. And you can do things like upload images and logos to the switcher. I'm glad to see an interface like this. Even if it's a little simplistic looking, there are just some things that are easier to do, especially configuration wise with a keyboard and mouse. Things like setting up your stream keys. This allows you to copy and paste them right from the source. The Ethernet port is also used to control your PTZ cameras through the Visca over IP protocol, and we'll talk more about that in a second. The right side has two 8th inch mic inputs and a headphone output. You can configure these inputs to be line level in the menu, which is a really important feature. A tally connector, I'll be honest, I can't find much information about that. The manual says it supports an external tally device, but no more information than that is given. The USB port is used to connect an external USB thumb drive or SSD drive to record your program out. It's not quite as compact as an SD card slot would have been for recording, but it is nice that you can connect an external SSD drive, or if you need to be really portable, you could connect something like this 128 gig thumb drive that's really small and you'd hardly even know it's there. I have a link to these down in the description of this video if you want to pick up a thumb drive like this. On the bottom, there is a quarter 20 screw hole, which gives you some options for mounting the switcher. If you're needing to be really portable, I guess you could mount it on top of your camera, but I'd prefer having the switcher in a tabletop configuration to operate the PTZ controls. But that's just my preference, and it is nice to have the mounting options. On the left side, this is such a simple thing, but it actually stood out to me as one of the first things I liked about this switcher. It's the power switch. A firm clicking switch is a nice thing that so many products nowadays seem to be leaving off. Or they have some sort of gimmicky button that you have to push and hold for some unknown number of seconds. I like this power switch that just clicks on and off. On the front of the unit, a couple things are going to stand out. The first is the built-in screen. 
This screen shows a multi-view of your four camera inputs and a preview and program view. It also shows a display of the current switcher settings in the bottom right, and that's where the menu will show up for all your configuration. I will say the screen is a decent size at five and a half inches, but for multi-view, your individual camera images are gonna be pretty small, especially for checking critical focus. The next thing that stands out on the top controls here is obviously the joystick for PTZ control. You can control any PTZ camera that has Visca over IP as a control protocol, which pretty much any PTZ camera that's worth purchasing these days uses Visca over IP. Configuring the cameras you want to control is as easy as entering the IP address of the camera. I'll go into the menu by pressing the menu button, scroll over to the PTZ camera icon, and then scroll down with camera one selected and enter the IP address of the camera. You can back out of the menu by pressing the menu button a few times. Now, if you press the cam button over here on the left, and then you use the preview camera buttons to select which camera you want to control. I just configured camera one, so I'll select camera one. Now the joystick will pan and tilt the camera and the menu and fade to black buttons become the zoom in and out control. And you can use the knob to control various other camera functions like focus or exposure. To save a position preset, once you have the camera set, while you're still in the camera control mode, if you press the POS or position button and then press a program number button, it will save the current position to the camera's presets. So if we move this camera away to a different position, again with the camera control active, just press the program number again and that position preset will be recalled. On the top left is a lock button. Long press it and a lock icon will appear on the screen and all the buttons are disabled. And then long press it again and the buttons become active. The mute button will mute all your audio going out to your program feed. Logo button, you can load PNG files through the web interface onto the switcher from a computer or your phone and then overlay that over your video with the logo button. And I will say this image could be anything you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be a logo. It could be a lower third with some information that you just want to regularly put on the screen. You could really use it for just about anything you want. Audio brings up an audio mixer with all of your audio inputs. You use the joystick to select an input and then the knob to adjust the audio level. Effect is the transition effect. If you want to use anything other than a fade or what they call mix for your transition, you select that here. And now the auto button or the T bar will use the selected transition type. The scenes, A and B buttons, and chroma and luma. These all kind of go together. It took me a little while to figure out how these work. And I'll be honest, some of this is just guesswork and pushing buttons till it did what I wanted. The manual isn't clear in explaining all of this functionality. But what I've determined is that A and B are two layers of video that you select from your inputs. What you're controlling is what happens in the preview window. So if you have both A and B layers off, you won't see any of your inputs in the preview. You'll just see the image that you have loaded for the background pattern, which you can load through the web interface. When I press, let's say layer B, I can select an input for that layer using the preview buttons. Let's use camera one. Now when I turn on layer A, I can select another input. This time I'm gonna select my computer input that has a lower third with a green background coming from my computer on input four. So now that is assigned to layer A. And if I press the chroma button, it keys out the green from input four and that is now overlaid over layer B or camera one. Now if I press the auto button, it will take that from the preview and put it live on my program output. I can still use the program input selection buttons to change the camera view under the overlay. Now notice when I took what was on the preview live and sent it to the program, it cleared the preview layering. So now I can build up another AB layer arrangement that's different from what's currently on my program layers. Essentially, you have an A and B layer set that's live on your program while you set up another A and B layer arrangement on your preview. 
In order to clear this key from the program, if I just press the chroma button right now, it's actually adding a chroma key to what's on the preview, not changing what's live on the program. So to clear the key from the program output, I have to assign a camera to a layer by itself in the preview and take that live. And that brings the AB layers that were active on the program now back to the preview where I can disassemble the chroma key. So you can only edit the A and B layers and change the keying when they are in the preview. The Scenes button lets you select from some different predefined layouts for the A and B layers. So this just isn't for keying. You could arrange the layers to have two cameras side by side or in a picture in picture kind of arrangement. And in this configuration, for example, anywhere that the camera inputs don't fill the screen, you'll see the background pattern image that's currently selected. You can also customize how you want your layers. If you long press the A or B button, I'll hold down the A button. Now I can use the joystick to position the layer and the knob to scale it. Just press the A layer button again and that completes the change. Now you could add your B layer and edit it. and take that custom arrangement live to the program output. The record button records to any USB drive that you have connected to the USB port. In the menu, you can configure the frames per second from 10 to 60. I find that a little odd that you can select non-standard frame rates. I'd be really hesitant to select anything other than 30 or 60. You can also select the bit rate anywhere from one to 30 megabits per second. What this tells me is that it's using one encoder for both your recording and live stream. It's nice that you have the option to go up to 30 megabits per second to get a high quality recording, but you're not gonna wanna stream at that bit rate. Usually for a 1080p stream, you'll be at six megabits per second. If it were me, I'd probably record at 30 megabits per second to an external SSD drive, and then use the USB-C output to a computer running OBS or other software like that to do the encoding for my live stream. Let's take a quick look at the web interface. From a browser, just put the IP address of the switcher in and you can control just about everything here that you can do on the surface of the switcher. The best thing about this though, is you can go to this media tab here at the bottom and this lets you copy and paste in your live stream destination URL and stream key. For a standalone switcher like this, this is a nice way of doing it. And one of the cool things about it being a browser-based control is you can do this from your phone. As long as your phone is connected to the same network as your switcher, you can pull up the control interface and copy and paste in your information for streaming, which could be really handy if you're out on location using this you don't even really need a computer to do any of the configuration. This media page is also where you can transfer your logo images and the background pattern images. I have to say the more I play with this switcher, the more I like it. It's actually laid out pretty well, and once you get the hang of what some of the not so obvious functions of some of the buttons do, you can control your cameras and put together a pretty impressive video production with your PDZ cameras pretty easily. I do wish it had SDI inputs, I think that the target PTZ cameras that you would probably want to use with a switcher like this are all going to have SDI outputs, and that's just going to be a more professional connection with locking connectors and the potential for long cable runs. With HDMI, you're limited to about 15 foot cable runs, unless you convert to SDI. The other thing I think is kind of a miss is having two HDMI program outputs and no aux or multi-view out. While the built-in screen is great to have if you need to be portable, it would be really nice to have the option to plug in a larger monitor and view the multi-view. What I really like about this switcher is its compactness that combines a four-channel video switcher, PTZ controls, and a built-in monitor. It makes for a portable, compact video system, and at this price point, to not have to purchase an additional controller for your PTZ cameras is definitely going to save you some money. If you don't have PTZ cameras and don't ever plan to, then it's probably not the video switcher for you. But if I was setting up a video system with PTZ cameras and wanted to be compact and portable, I'd give this switcher a serious look. I hope you found this video helpful. Until next time, bye.